Hey everybody, it's Nerdicane here. Um, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to do a, a different format of a video, and I'm going to talk about art and how it pertains to comics. Uh, in art history, I think of a classic, modern, and a postmodern era. And I sort of kind of parallel that to comics. There's a classic, a modern, and a postmodern. Classic, uh, you think about Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Michelangelo. Not, no, not that one. This one. Um, Brunelleschi. They had to have skills to capture reality because they were sort of the archivists of reality. Um, there weren't, there was no other way to capture what was what reality was like, what things looked like. Um, compare that to our golden age of comics, and this is the time period that set the standard. Then came the camera uh, to the to the art world, and suddenly artists didn't have to be the archivists of reality. They were free to experiment with form, tone, expression. Impressionism, surrealism, you get um, Picasso, Dali, Duchamp. Uh, du this is Duchamp. Duchamp entered this into a an art contest, and it was thrown out for being obscene. He basically took a urinal, and he turned it on its side, and he called it a fountain. And this is punk rock, like 60 years before punk rock came along. Uh, he was a modern artist. These are the modern artists, and he was kind of thumbing his nose at the, at the establishments. And they were experimenting with the rules, but they knew the rules. These artists of the modern era, they had a classical training. You see, Picasso is known for stuff like this, but he could do this as well. And all of these artists of the modern era, they had that as well. Uh, tie that into comics. Modern comics is everything that I consider from the death of the comics code uh, we, to about the crash, post-crash. Um, we started to see flaws in our characters, in our beloved characters, and it made them better. So these creators were experimenting with the form and the tone. We got uh, darker subject matter, conflicts between iconic heroes, dark origins of heroes, and the rise of the anti and the antihero. Um, and it was great. This was a uh, this was the seeds of the boom of the '90s. Com creators were free to experiment with the rules, but they knew the basic formula that made these characters work from before. And the industry boomed uh, in the 90s. It, comics were enormous. There were books selling in the millions every month. Uh, and then we got a little cocky and we got a little crazy and it crashed. Okay, we're going to cut back to art. Post-World War II, this is where the postmodernist art happened. And a postmodernist theory, one of the tenets, there's three, uh, one of the tenets is that there's no meaning to things except for what you assign. So people could draw whatever, they, you know, people could do whatever weird crap they wanted, and they'd say, oh, this has great meaning. And uh, Somebody bought it. Somebody said, okay, great. So that opened the door for these art frauds like Pollock and Warhol. Um, you know, they always point to them as like, oh, great modern art. They're garbage. You look at their stuff, it's garbage. Might have been like trendy and cool and hip for their time, but if you look at it now, it's just like low effort. Um scribbles and celebrity pictures became accepted as art and you know once they got in they held the door open for others of their ilk um sound familiar to anything that happened in comics recently uh there was a new wave of postmodernist artists and they have a love of ugliness and destruction this is ai weiwei um he is destroying a priceless vase and he's taking a couple selfies with it and he's putting that up as as art then we got the minimalists who uh this is minimalist art it's garbage uh nowadays we have jeff coons he's working nowadays he basically does this to a lot of things he does that little metal thing and, and he says oh you see yourself reflected in the art and that's blah 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 meaning 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 you know he got busted um doing this metalized treatment to a mcfarland toys figure of popeye and he sold it as art to some somebody who was willing to pay for it, and uh, he got busted a little after that. Um, it hasn't been all bad, this modern, this postmodern era. You have Herring, um, who passed away in the 80s of AIDS, uh, and Banksy. They were sort of like street graffiti artists, and you couldn't quantify it. You couldn't sell it. You couldn't put that in a museum, and that was great. Um, but for every truly interesting artist like those two, for every one of those, you have thousands like this um and this and by the way uh these blue rectangles sold for 44 
million dollars. Postmodern art, in a lot of ways, now is just the art of shock value. I think of things like uh, the crucifix. The, there's a picture of a crucifix in a jar of urine, the artist's urine, um, that sold for however much it's in a, it's a, in a museum. Um, one artist actually defecated into cans close the can and put that as on display as like artist shit that and that's what it's called artist shit um we've gotten so dumb in this modern era of art that this i do love this this is the glasses prank somebody went into an art gallery took their glasses off put it on the floor and then just sat back and watched and people started coming up and taking pictures of the glasses like it was an installation piece um I guess when it was over, he walked over and he picked his glasses up and he put it on and just walked out. And all those people who took pictures of it thinking it was some some strange had some strange meaning they didn't understand it was an installation piece were like, yeah, uh, you guys just got pranked. You just took pictures of my glasses on the floor thinking it was art. So back to comics, uh, post crash two thousands. What I sort of consider the postmodern era of comics. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as the SJW era and it was pretty good at first it really didn't go off the rails um we got things like the ultimates planet hulk the original civil war which was awesome uh miles morales which was pretty daring and i didn't like him at first i just thought he was this strange minority rebranding of a classic character and then getting into reading i'm like okay this is it was pretty good i mean it was it was he became his own character um despite having the mantle of spider-man um, and things were trucking along. Then it started to change right about 2008, 2009. Uh, Diversity in Comics has done... He's got a video about the Rosetta Stone of SJW Comics. It's actually very insightful, very interesting. Um, go check it out. After that, the true postmodernists found their way into comics. And things got ugly really fast. Um, Squirrel Girl became this. Um, Carol Danvers became this, and then the destructionists entered, um, fueled by this writing, this new writing crop of YA authors who really had no interest in comics aside from uh, picking up a paycheck. Hulk became this guy, um, who's really just uninteresting, no struggle, really blah as a character. Um, Thor became unworthy, and while Jane Foster's Thor has been okay. Um, Oh, I can't remember who's writing that, but he's done a pretty good job with writing it. It's just not Thor, and it's just, it doesn't have the impact. And uh, Iron Man was replaced, and Wolverine was replaced. Uh, it was the lack, it, all this was like a lackluster product packaged as superior to the original. But they were received by fans as just a pale copy. Um, subtle destruction then gave way to overt destruction. The first family of Marvel Comics, the Fantastic Four, destroyed and ended. The X-Men destroyed and ended. Now that had a little bit more to do with the Fox rights deal, but still you took this, you took these two foundations from two different eras of Marvel Comics and you just destroyed them and took them apart. Uh, it didn't end there. The 616, the universe that all of these characters originated in, was destroyed. The Ultimates universe, which was something really great from the 2000s, also destroyed. There is... A new attitude devoted to destruction of the icons, and even the fan base uh, from these pros, and that's that's been very well logged by uh, a lot of other people like Douglas Ernst, Diversity in Comics, uh, Captain Cummings, the Umbrella Guy, just some guy. Uh, God, I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. But then things got better. Oh no, they didn't get better. Then things, then the worst thing to ever happen to Marvel Comics happened. Nick Spencer's Secret Empire. And Nick Spencer is really the only name that I'm dropping here. Um, because what he did was just so horrible. He changed the canon of Cap to be that he was always a Nazi agent in hiding. And yes, you know, we've moved past that and that didn't sell and we've made fun of it. But in canon, that stands. That was actually part of the Marvel canon, part, as much as we would like to forget it and move past it, we can't because that's part of 
Cap's history now. Um, the destruction keeps going on. Even hangers on on the industry. People who shouldn't have sway on the industry get in, are getting in on the act. Um, attacking long-standing pros based on their political beliefs. Uh, blowing every little comment they disagree with or bits of satire from years ago into crimes against humanity. Um, I don't know how these, uh, these people got power in the industry, but they seized it, and uh, they're doing what a postmodernist does. They're destroying, and that's really the only thing that they know how to do. So this is where we are. We're in a postmodern era of comics, and the industry is reaping what the people have in the industry have worked towards, destruction. Um, the industry is down. Last year, 50 comic shops nationwide closed. Um, we are living culturally. Uh, we're living in a golden age of, no, of nerd culture, but comic books, which is one of the, the root pillars of, of nerd culture, they're languishing in low, sla low sales and a dwindling fan base. Um, it's really, it shouldn't be happening, but it is. So what can we do about it? What as fans can we do about it? As the true believers, what can we do about it? Well, we've already started to do it. Um, we have the Move the Needle uh, movement which Diversity in Comics started, and it's really great. It's, it's a way to get the good comics out, and it's a way to show the companies, DC, Image, Marvel, uh, Boom Studio, all these companies, it's a way to show them that this is a good comic. This is what we like. Don't listen to the echo chamber that's developed in your companies. When they see this hashtag every Wednesday trending and their names attached to it, they have to take notice because this is um, where the money is coming from. It's for people buying these things. Comic reviewers. Um, there's a lot of comic reviewers out there, and they've they've turned away from just beating up comics to promoting good comics. And that's a really good thing that the comic reviewers have, have started to do. Um, we as fans, you know, if you don't want to do a, a YouTube channel and don't have time to do videos all the time, as fans, you can use your Twitter. Help promote comics, comics that are good. Um, if you have any cousins or any, any nephews or nieces, you know, buy them comic books for their next comic for their next birthday. Um, watch the reviewers, see what's good, see what's good for for kids. Try to pass the love of these characters on. Now, I granted a lot of the characters are very different and very hard to love nowadays, but try to pass that along to the younger generation. That way, comics have a future to look forward to. Um, other than that, I really don't have a whole lot more for this video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you like the new format. Um, I don't know how if I'm going to do more like this because this I'm working with Windows Movie Maker and oh my god, it is difficult to work with. This is like the fourth time I've tried to do this video. Um, but tell me what you think. Tell me if I missed anything. Uh, tell me if I'm way off on anything in the comments. I'm always up for talking with my fans or my followers. Uh, hit a like, hit a subscribe. You can hit me up on Twitter. I uh, have the same handle, Nerdicane. But thank you for your just shy of 14 minutes. Thanks for watching. Um, have a good day.